you will remember that we mentioned that all uh, tumors, malignant or benign, start out with uh, tr malignant or transformation of one single cell. Isn't that amazing? That's why tumors are uh, spoken of as being clonal, because they are all ultimately derived from that one transformed cell. And then that cell uh, multiplies, undergoes mitosis, uh, it doubles, and then it doubles again and again and again. And the general estimate is that after 30 doublings, you have about a billion cells. And those billion cells are going to weigh about one gram. And one gram of tissue is approximately one cubic centimeter, let's say. So uh, in reality, that's probably about the smallest reasonable detection of a tumor using, uh, you know, modern uh, radiologic uh, methods, let's say. But the point I want to make is that it may take months or even years for that one transformed cell to become one gram or 30 doublings. Uh, there's a lot of factors, and I know the patients always ask how long will it take and blah, 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 but the fact is you really can't say. If you take 30, I'm sorry, 10 more doublings from that one gram, you're going to have about a kilogram now. And that's what is generally thought of uh, as estimate as being a lethal burden. So a, a one kilogram of tumor, you know, two and a half pounds, including its metastases, is generally very, very serious and, you know, regarded as life-threatening. That's why one kilogram of cancer is referred to as a lethal burden. Now, if you remember, we talked about cells in the earlier chapters as uh, being able to do only three things, multiply, die, or mature. So your tumor now has a variety of cells. They're all ultimately derived from that one cell, but now they have mutated even more. But let's say there's three categories of things that tumor cells can do, which are exactly the same three things that regular cells can do. They can multiply or be in the replicative pool. And remember, even in very, very rapidly growing tumors, only a small fraction of cells are able to multiply. Most of the cells are either dead or dying or have matured into cells which will not multiply any further. And of course, that has tremendous implications for therapy because in therapy, uh, you don't want to go after the cells that are already dying. The body has already taken care of that. You don't necessarily want to go after cells that are mature because, you know, they'll eventually die too. You only want to go after this relatively small fraction of cells, and that's where the research is being uh, aimed at. So, uh, Let's look at that a little bit more graphically. You have your single theoretical tumor cells. You have a uh, growth and progression to the point where there's 30 doublings. may take months to years. And now you have a billion cells, which is about one gram. And then you undergo 10 more doublings, and you have large tumors, metastasis, what they call the lethal burden. And here you have cells now which uh, red ones, meaning they can still multiply. And then you have other cells here, uh, which are either uh, metastatic or invasive or non-antigenic or requiring fewer growth factors. These are all various types of tumor cells. In terms of tumor growth, you have, like I said, three types of cells. You have the proliferative pool which are descendants of the single transform cell, which can still multiply. And then you have the two categories of cells which can't multiply. The dead cells or apoptotic cells are the differentiated cells. So that's the way you should think of tumor cells. Think of them exactly the same way as regular cells, only they're malignant. Let's look at some of the uh, features of malignant cells. We already talked about some of the adjectives we use to describe cells. Let's talk about other features. Let's talk about invasion or infiltration. Let's talk about capsule. Let's talk about basement membrane. Let's talk about metastasis. These are all things commonly described. Here's a tumor. Uh, it's a breast tumor. 
Here's normal breast tissue, and here is a very well-defined, round, smooth, uniform. I, could, I'm, I almost use the word rubbery, except that wouldn't be fair because you're only looking at a picture. And you see it has this fine little capsule around it. Generally speaking, tumors which are nicely encapsulated by fibrous tissue are benign tumors. This is the most common benign tumor of breast, especially young women. This is a fibroadenoma. And it's not worth it to describe all of the features, but you know, the connective tissue part is the fibril part. This little glandular or epithelial part is the adeno part. And there's that nice little compressed fibrous tissue separating it here from the left, which is normal breast tissue. That's a normal breast lobule. That's fat. That's a duct. That's connective tissue. And about two thirds of the field here on the right is your fibroadenoma. On the other hand, here's a tumor of the breast, and you really can't appreciate a capsule here, can you? You can see this white area, but look how irregularly it blends off into the surrounding fat tissue. This is another breast tumor. This is breast cancer. And now you know why and how the word cancer became used to describe malignant tumors. Cancer is crab. Crabs have claws. Claws branch off. So that's how the term cancer got its name. The fact that it's invasive and these claws branch off from the main tumor. They are not contained. The concept of infiltration or invasion is also a microscopic one. You can see on this general right two-thirds that that's we have all fibrous tissue and some fat. You can see in the southwest over here some epithelial cells. What you can see are tiny little nests of epithelial cells now streaming off into the uh, connective tissue. This is microscopic infiltration. This is the counterpart of gross infiltration. Here's the same thing, a little bit higher power. There's a blood vessel. These are cancer nests. And look, it's almost like we can now have little crabs rather than gross crabs. They have these little things that are streaming off and invading into the connective tissue. This is an extremely classical microscopic picture of cancer of any type. Because the breast is a gland, and because some of these little groups look like they are little circular nests, you might say this is an adenocarcinoma. Most cancers of the breast are adenocarcinomas because the breast is a gland. So most malignancies of glandular tissues or organs are adenocarcinomas. Here's a liver. It's been cut down the middle. It has nodules all over it. You could have some normal tissue in between. This is a classical appearance of metastatic disease to the liver. The uh, white areas are metastatic tumor, and these browner areas are normal liver. So if I told you that this liver was approximately one-third involved with metastasis, would you believe me? Of course you would, because you can see that even from this one representative slice, about one-third of what you see is round circles rather than normal uh, brown liver tissue. Here is uh, metastasis on a microscopic level now. You could see glands, you could see some junk within glands, and you could see that there are a lot of lymphoid areas, like here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. This is an adenocarcinoma, as you would guess, because it's glandular-like, which has metastasized to a lymph node. And it looks like it has replaced most of this lymph node. So if I was to tell you the metastatic tumor replaced 90% of the lymph node, would you believe me? You certainly would, because only about 10% of what you see here is lymphoid tissue, like here and here and here. Okay, we'll give it a rest. And we'll go back into slide number 39 uh, on our next uh, movie. And I thank you very much.